This isn't really an slash out slash story, but it happened on an slash out slash road trip in the middle of nowhere so I might as well tell it. I've never written about this before because it was too traumatizing to think about for a while. So I guess this will be like a therapy session for me. So I live in Toronto, and just about the only good thing about this city is that you can drive two to three hours in any direction and be pretty far away from civilization. Last summer me and my girlfriend decided to go on a road trip from Toronto to Thunder Bay and back, with some planned out hiking slash fishing stops along the way. Neither of us have ever been further north than Sudbury so it seemed like it'd make for a fun adventure, visiting all the small towns along the way. Our route was to take Highway 11 way up north of Timmins and just follow it all the way to the end. Then on the way home we'd take Highway 17 along Lake Superior for a change of scenery. Just for some context, the 11 is the northmost major highway in all of Ontario and about as far away from civilization as you can get in a car in Ontario. Think driving through the Nevada desert but with trees and way fewer cars on the road. On the third day, the sun had just set and we were coming up to a very tiny town called Matice, which is the purple circle on the map. Our plan was to look for a motel to stay at for the night. As we approached, we noticed a group of people, about five or six, standing right in the middle of the highway, which goes through the middle of town. They were all facing away from us and it looked like they were just engaging in casual talk, in the middle of the road for some reason. I slowed down to a crawl as I approached, and they didn't seem to notice that we were there. I then stopped completely and we just sat there like WTF. I know it's a pretty barren highway but this is still odd. So, I gave the horn a little tap. They immediately turned around in perfect unison, and I shit you not, their eyes were glowing green. And this wasn't the headlights reflecting off their eyes or that sort of thing. They were literally glowing like fucking LED lights. Needless to say I nearly shat my pants and my girlfriend started screaming bloody murder. There were some guard rails on each side of the road which prevented me from doing a quick U-turn, so without thinking I just stepped on the gas and tried my best to split through the middle. As we got closer I noticed that they had weird body proportions, like their arms were strangely long and they were really tall and lanky, they weren't ILMAOs though, definitely still looked human. They luckily reacted and got out of my way. While I was speeding through the town as fast as possible I wasn't really paying attention to my surroundings and my adrenaline was off the charts. But my girlfriend swears that as we were passing through, she could see the same glowing green eyes peering at us through windows in the houses we were passing. As we were leaving the town, which was only like 30 seconds of driving but seemed like an eternity, I looked in my rear view mirror and they were fucking running after us. And they were running on all fours. Like fucking animals. I'm getting chills just typing this shit out and reliving it. It was something straight out of a fucking horror movie. All I could see was this moving group of green light slash eyes bobbing up and down in the distance. I floored it and didn't look back again until we got to the next town called Hearst, which was about 30 kilometers west. Did I mention my girlfriend was crying hysterically the whole time and pissed her pants all over my seat? Okay so, those things were gone, and luckily this town was a lot bigger with more light, and there were other cars on the road, so we felt fairly safe here. We stopped at a pub, used the bathroom and ordered some drinks. We weren't sure what the plan was yet but we needed to rest and chill for a bit. The place was pretty empty. The server was a middle-aged lady who looked pretty seasoned to put it politely. After we got our drinks, I tried to think of how I could casually bring up what just happened to us without sounding like a complete schizo. So I casually said to her, paraphrasing, hey so, uh, seen any green-eyed goblins around lately, and gave a really fake sounding chuckle. I think she could sense the terror in my voice because she just gave me a blank look and quickly walked to the back room without even acknowledging me. A couple minutes later a man who I assume was her husband comes out. He looks me directly in the eye and tells me to get the fuck out and never come back. I wasn't in the mood for a fight so we complied and left. That's pretty much where the story ends. We ended up going back home the next day and never completed our trip. There's no way we could have enjoyed ourselves. 
Since then I've scoured the internet for similar stories, trying to figure out what the hell happened, but I've come up completely empty-handed. A little anticlimactic, but it keeps people entertained. Be me. Annual trip to rural Mexico to visit family. Lake and Wildland 10 minute, walking from edge of Pueblo. Lots of carp so decide to go fishing. Fast forward me walking downhill on stone path to lake. Small plots of land on both sides lined with crude stone fences, cacti, and agaves. Look down to take in the view. Heard of cattle near lake. Ranchers use this place to graze so no biggie. Stop at a well for a bit to rest and give cattle some time to move on. Get going again once cattle are far enough. Walk 10 feet only to look up and see a bull staring right at me another 15 to 20 feet away. Not a cow with horns bull, but one of these tall, beefy, humped and dewlap motherfuckers. I believe it was a Brahmin or some Brazilian breed that looks similar. I think we caught each other by surprise. After short stare down, I take a step back to get away. Bull takes one step forward and stomps foot yes, some of them actually do that. Can't escape trail without shredding myself in cactus and agave spines and old barbed wire. Fujiji.jpg Keep walking back slowly. Once there was enough distance I turn my back to leave faster. Hear stones moving behind me. Bull is following me. Waits for me to turn back to keep move forward. Do the typical shoe stuff we do for unfamiliar livestock, animals. Bull backs away a little. This repeats for good length of the trail. Realize Bull might actually just be curious. Also realize the person taking care of them might think I'm stealing it. Oh shit dot jpg. Decide to end this and pick up rock to scare bull away. Hear a loud A from a distance. Bull turns to where voice came from and runs toward her. There were some fish in the well so I scooped one of those up and left. Used to often go hunting for fossils with my dad and brother back in the late 90s early oils. We once headed to a spot near some village close to Bern, Switzerland. A colleague of my dad had suggested the spot. We somehow get confused and lost pre-internet days. And so my dad decides we'll instead just go for an adventure, hike into the woods on the flank of a mountain, hoping we can find something interesting also to justify the one hour car ride to his kids. We eventually stumble upon a cave, and I shit you not. There was an actual decapitated pig head hanging over the entrance. We heard voices coming from the inside, and there were lit torches on the walls. We ran as fast as possible, got in the car and bounced, looking back. I'm guessing it was probably a bunch of edgelords LARPing as satanists, or maybe even hermits who wanted to scare away and wanted visitors, but I still wonder to this day what the fuck was taking place inside. I completely forgot about this for about 15 years, then remembered it and thought it was a dream, but my brother and dad confirmed it took place. Weird shit. Three years ago, my wife and I went for a one-day hike in the woods near my native town. It's a small mountain town in Romania, the kind you walk in one direction for 10 minutes and you are in the woods. We took the course of a small river and followed it deep into the forest. I've never been in that area before but I know the place as the back of my hand and can orient really good as this is my job. We were walking for about 4 hours and my friends were starting to get tired and we took a small break in a heavily wooded area before we would hike up a hill and get to a nearby village. As we were having a quick snack they both started looking really pale and scared. My wife and I asked them what's the matter, and they pointed to some trees and said, can't you see those women in white looking straight at us? As soon as we turned to look they said, they're running into the forest. We all started running to the place they showed us to see if there was anyone there, but there wasn't. We went back to our hike and went back home, my friends were obviously disturbed by the fact that only they could see those women in white. Fast forward two weeks later, we were having a barbecue for one of those friends' birthday, and we started talking about planning another hike. And then they started jokingly saying not to go through the same place. One of our friends has a GF that is really into folklore and the supernatural and overheard our story and she told us they saw a forest nymph, we call them eel, in our culture. She said that only men could see eel, and they are like mermaids, they lure you deep into the forest and then feed on you. Hearing this I asked, well, if only men can see them why didn't O see them, immediately she pointed at my wedding band and said, you are already taken, 
they do not appear for married men, as they are not free for taking. Sipsy Wilderness, L, had a late start, but planned a short day, sunsetting, close to where I planned on camping, taking a leak, there's a stream behind me, maybe 30 back, in front of me is mega dense, overgrown forest, backed by a cliff wall maybe 100 away, hear someone walking down the trail, glance, but don't see anyone, hear him say excuse me in a tone you'd use, if you wanted to walk past someone, he was right behind me, clear as day, though I hadn't hear him walk up, Turn around. All I say is dude, as in dude. I'm trying to piss. Why are you standing right behind me? No one there, yeah? It's the typical, and no one was there, when I turned around story. I had never felt more fear and dread than I did at that moment. It was the most horrifying thing that's ever happened to me. It was nine years ago, when I was 31. I first started camping when I was three months old, and started backpacking when I was eight. So this wasn't a case of an inexperienced person hearing a sound and being freaked out because they are in an unfamiliar environment. And it wasn't just a sound, it was a man speaking to me, just a foot or two behind me, to close while I'm trying to pee. It would be impossible for someone to have been somehow playing a prank by yelling from the bushes, or something. There was nowhere to hide, and I could hear how close he was. So I'd planned on about an 8 mile hike, and it was timed pretty well. I would have arrived at camp probably with very little sunlight left. Instead I hiked straight back to my car, without stopping. In the dark, I used a headlamp. So it's not like I was using moonlight only. A portion of that is a 30 long cave with no bypass that you have to go through sideways without. Your pack, it's just where a giant boulder, and I guess a small landslide fell into another boulder. Pretty neat under normal circumstances, but terrifyingly during this. I remember being scared something was going to grab my pack or be waiting for me on the other side. Something was going to happen when I made it past the cave and was nearing my car. All I could think was that my car wouldn't start or I'd have a flat tire or something. Like for some reason I'd be delayed even further from getting the fuck out of there. Got in my car and sped the fuck out. I probably checked the back seat a dozen times before driving into town. I got a room at a Motel 6 and literally didn't sleep. I just watched TV and stayed away from the window. Be me hiking on an isolated trail far away from anything see movement in corner of my eye. It's a naked woman walking a distance off in the forest get urged to follow. Father told me never to follow anything in the woods that doesn't make eye contact continue walking set up camp in a really comfy place. Some clearing bordered by fallen trees overgrown with moss and boulders arching over parts of it make campfire start playing harmonica. Feel very strange, almost elated all of a sudden rustling around me, but I don't care, it's like I'm enchanted by my harmonica. Ro is standing a meter away from me just vibing squirrel looking at me, from a tree. Fire rhythmically moving in sync with wild mountain thyme feel at peace notice visual disturbances in my eyesight. It's like something invisible is disturbing the air world seems to be in sync with my song. The trees and moss follow the song. The wind adds notes to the music song ends log cracks animals scatter everything fades fall asleep. Wake up at midnight to see full moon staring at me. Feel extremely scared about moving away from my fire. My father always told me all these stories about spirits. The beings that we can't see except during transitory states. Dusk, dawn, equinoxes, full moon, at special places, during dreams, or when close to death. I always believed him. He's a very trustworthy honest man. He told me it was wise not to follow the woman, as these were true humans once but were lured by the forest into joining it. They aren't victims of evil nor do they suffer, they are happy peaceful people, and the only way to break the spell on them is if they make a contact with a virgin of the opposite sex. The forest controls them to a great extent, and it lures others in using them. The woodland spirits just enjoy the company of humans, and want more to join them. They're spellbound so to say, not evil or non-human, but happy and content being taken care of by the forest. Love frees them. The beings near my campfire were animals and spirits that knew that I respected them and not a raid of them. They joined the music and made it so much more beautiful than anything I could personally make. Even the great elements joined the dance. It was a strange experience, one of many I've had. I'm a Christian though, and I don't worship these spirits, and not all are benign. Know that the spirit world makes a lot of sense. If you're in a scary place, there's scary spirits. If you're in a comfy place, it tends to be guarded by the forest, and it will tolerate those, 
who mean no harm. The spirit world functions mostly on intent, and they are far better at seeing emotional states than humans, and respect is the only thing they really ask for. Accidentally harming them is hard. The only thing that elicits a harmful response is disrespecting them, and denying that they are a force of nature too. Be me last summer, walking a trail solo through the countryside, not completely out of civilization but in a sparsely populated rural area by the coast. This part of the country is isolated, and there are no major infrastructure or developments. People are friendly and warm if a bit old-fashioned and set in their ways. Sunset approaches so I head for the closest pub, for a warm meal and a pint. Plan to pitch in the beer garden with the permission of the landlord. Arrive just as the sun starts to dip below the horizon pubs closed. JPG. Bugger. Slightly miffed to have by vision of a comfy evening drinking with the locals thwarted by the coof. Not too upset though. The trail takes me through a forest where I can sleep the night. Forest is around a mile and half away so by the time I arrive it's twilight. Forest isn't what I expected at all. Not the old growth with large oaks and clearings to pitch in that I was used to in this part of the country. Instead it turned out to be a plantation forest. Looking it up now, the forest was planted in the late 40s after the war to provide lumber for reconstruction. Appears neglected if not completely untouched. The logging trails are overgrown and all trees are beyond maturity. Plantation is made up of pine spaced regularly in rows and columns. Walking through the place in twilight gave me a very uncanny feeling. Whole place felt off, passing by each row of trees would open into an alley that looked identical to the last PIC related, began to feel unsettled for the first time in the multi-day hike. I knew the regularity of the plantation was spooking me. The artificial symmetry and recurrence of the layout was unnatural and probably triggered some primal response in my brain keeping me alert. However, I had frequently walked through plantations before and never had this disquieting sensation. I then realized I was walking in complete silence except for the crunch of pine needles under my feet. Normally walking through trees you're accompanied by the sounds of the forest, especially in the evening the forest comes alive with birdsong and the sound of insects before they sleep. There was nothing in this plantation, it just felt dead. The pine monoculture was probably the wrong habitat for the local wildlife, so the birds and beasts stayed away. Lack of sound and eerie regularity of the forest was getting to me, but darkness was quickly falling, and I was forced to stay and pitch my tent. Walked four or five more minutes into the forest, got my tent up and began to relax as I ate an MI and drank a cup of tea, heard the tread of pine needles not far off, and turned around to look. The only irregular object I could make out in the blackness was a tall silhouette of what looked like a leafless tree, probably just a dead young pine deprived of sunlight. Why hadn't I noticed this irregular tree when I first put up my tent? I then understood. It was not among the trees but was standing in the middle of one of the alleys, alone breaking the pattern of the plantation. It wasn't part of the forest. The blood left my face, and I felt a strong sensation of doom trickle through my body. Looking towards this thing it was entirely immobile, and was making no sound. My rational mind told me it was the trunk of a tree, but my instincts were screaming at me to run. Didn't dare approach so I fearfully crept inside of my tent and began to wait out the night. Silence continued for what felt like half an hour before I once again heard the crackle of the pine needles. I lay petrified in my sleeping bag with no option to run. The sound was getting closer to me. Just as I felt it looming over the tent the sound stopped. I drifted off to sleep then awoke with the dawn light streaming into the tent. First thing I noticed was the chorus of bird song. Mustered the courage to poke my head out of the tent. No sign of whatever I was looking at last night lads. I'm sure this is some of the few non-LARPing stories you will ever hear on this board, and I don't like telling them but today's a good day. I will set the scene for you. Mom and Dad bought a piece of property out in the Bunas of northern Manitoba, Canada. This property lies on the last major east-west road going north. What I mean by that is north of this road there is nothing but forest, swamp and lake, and I mean nothing for hundreds of kilos, not one community, until you hit the arctic tree lean which is why I'm an outist. The property is on a crossroads of roads going southeast-west. Four miles to the east there is a main road, west is 50 kilos of dense swamp to the next town, 12 miles south is the little town. We had one neighbor two and a half miles west of us. Great hunting. Be my older brother. 
1 a.m. ish. Decide to have a smoke. Go outside. Decide to let his new puppy Molly out with him. Wild animals roam abundantly as you might guess so he takes the spotlight and didn't want to grab a rifle so grab the hammer. In 4 hammer what's that gonna do he's a retard. He wants to see how far the new spotlight will shine so he walks to the road. From the driveway he shines the lights out. The puppy whimpers and cries, shaking, looking north. He turns north. Next to the stop sign stands this tall gray hairless creature, standing as a man, two legs two arms. Unusually long arms and legs compared to torso. Dark sunken in eyes, wide slit for a mouth. Proportionate head so this ain't no eye. We measured later using me as reference to the stop sign the next day and we figured it was 9 feet tall. It stood motionless. My brother froze in horror, but was finally able to scream fuck no. Fuck no. The creature grimaced and jerked as if expecting something, but it stood its ground and didn't move. My brother knew if he attacked it he would lose so all he could do was run, he ran his ass off, the dog was already long gone. He looked back because he didn't hear anything behind him as he ran. The creature was in the cattails in the ditch attempting to hide, but it was massive and pale compared to the scenery and its eyes glue white from the light. He kept running. Found the dog cowering near the porch door. Picked her up and let her sleep in his bed that night. He didn't sleep of course. He tells us all the next day, hysterical. I later saw this same creature, along with some of my family, and a few locals did too after asking around. I know it's a fucking meme but when I seen it and by my brother's description it was exactly pig related, however the pig is like an adolescent, because the one we seen was much much larger. If anyone wants to hear the other stories I have of this thing I'm happy to share only if you believe me. I know what I saw and I know my brother isn't lying. I hope this story is useful or at least interesting for one of you outdoorsmen. I know we can't be the only ones who have seen them. Also we have no name for it so names are welcome, or even what you think it could be. We just call it the creature keck. Be me, on trip through western SC with wife. Last night of trip and we're staying at some state park. Campsite along a creek a few miles into the park. Get to park later than expected. Probably only hour and half of sunlight left. Not worried, both of us are experienced backpackers and we should be able to get there just about when it gets dark. Stop by and talk to ranger to get parking pass. Kinda weird middle aged dude. He seems oddly worried about us starting so late but is moving slow as fuck getting us the pass. States several times that he leaves at 9 o'clock and has to shut the gate for the night then. Okay whatever. Finally get the parking pass. It's dated for us leaving several days later despite us only reserving site for one night. Almost correct him but I want to hurry up and get going so figure whatever and let it slide. Then proceeds to tell us that the site is not where I'd thought it was. Thought the site was along the main trail, site 15, pick related, he says we have to cross the stream and take the red trail to get to it. Okay, he's the ranger and I'm just some retard, can't tell from the map anyway. Head out, see a few people at closer campsites but none after a mile or so. Getting dark as we turn off main trail onto orange and then red trail. Trail quality immediately drops. End up basically bushwhacking through underbrush halfway to campsite. Moving slowly, sun has set behind mountains now. See no signs of campsite before ours. Consult map. We have to be where we think we are. Decide to keep going and look for sight. Hit unmistakable turn in trail as it goes up a mountain. Should have passed two campsites by now but no sign of anything at all. Wife is kinda freaked out. Agree that ranger definitely told us to take this trail. 
start to think about how we didn't tell anyone we were gonna be at this park. Wife says what we're both thinking. Weird ranger dude straight up lied to us about sight. Think about how he dated us leaving several days from now. Fuck.jpg, pitch black by this point, drizzling, no moon. Discuss just setting up camp here. Decide against it, obviously first place he'd come to murder ape us. Head back to main trail. Creeped out the whole way. Have hiked twice the distance we should have at this point. Finally make it back to main trail. Two options, head back to truck or continue down trail to where campsite should be. Almost head to truck and leave, remember he said gate would be locked till morning. Decide we're overreacting, probably just a new ranger or something, head to site. Finally get there hours after we should have. No sign of life anywhere. Only light is from shitty headlamps we had. Both of us still creeped out. It's dead silent. No longer drizzling but it's that type of heavy air where everything feels super closed in and any sound seem to get sucked up into nothing. Set up tent, hang bare bag, wife starts cooking. Sitting around shitty stove and both of us hear something. Sounds like someone walking off the main path down towards our campsite, probably 25 yards away through brush. Oh fuck here we go. I stand up and draw my carry piece. Shine shitty headlamp up trail, can't see shit. Sound stop. Not sure what to do, so I start whistling like some fucking hillbilly. Footsteps start again, this time seeming to go back the way they came. Stand there for a few minutes. No more sounds from trail. Eventually get around to eating and then crawl into tent. Lay there with one hand on my gun all night. Hightail it out of there at first light the next morning. Wife still thinks that we were almost murdered that night, never looked down on me concealed carrying again. I'm still not sure if it was just a dumb ranger and then some other poor schmuck on the trail I freaked out or if he really was trying to fuck with us. Okay I have one that happened to me quite a while ago, be me. 21. It's late August and my senior year of college is starting. Enrolled in a hiking and camping class is an easy way to fill some gen ed credit stuff. Classes. All obnoxious freshman guys. Regret.jpg. To junior girls join for second class. Class breaks to groups of three and they ask me into their group. One has a boyfriend the other is a six tense who's giving me serious TTF vibes and generally seems chill. End up hiking and hanging outside class. Make plans to camp nearby one weekend. I pick an easy local trail and camping area near a small lake. Show off my ability to cook over fires and enjoy the scenery and even dip in the water. It's still reasonably warm in early September. Lie down and progress from snuggling to sex twice. She needs to pee and I go out with her and stand watch. Hear rustling slightly. Point flashlight at it. She screams. I don't see anything and assure her it was an animal. We go back to the tent and... I show her me carefully zipping the flap closed and turning bolt pulls. Into the tent, we snuggle and end up having sex again. Her hips are hurting since we're in round 3, so we switch to me behind her and while I'm looking down at her I then look up and through the tent wall I swear I see a light in the woods. Not at us but moving across. I figure it's a night hiker and I'm also not going to stop railing a girl to investigate a light in the woods, finish and it's the furthest thing from my mind. Lay awake and cuddle her. She's asleep quick, I doze off but wake up quickly. I realize I desperately have to piss now. The main door is facing the lake and she's basically in front of it. There's a second door that has a clump of cedars directly by it, but I sneak out that way. Stand by the trees and look at the moon and stars reflecting on the lake, while I piss. I'm bare ass and it's starting to cool down due to the time of year and no cloud cover. I turn and walk over to the opposite side of the tent, Passing the door facing the lake, suddenly thinking of the nose and light earlier. In the moonlight where the woods is more open, I see movement when I stop. Can literally see a human shape crawling sort of angled through the low brushy shit. Can't even tell which end is which or clothing color. Just a shape slow crawling. Debate saying something or shining the light. 
honestly feeling borderline panic as I consider all the implications, see a head pick up, realized it's a person or humanoid crawling backwards, now staring at me, my skin is crawling, realize I'm literally naked in the woods staring down unknown assailants, crawler still hasn't moved since picking head up, jump to tent and grab zipper, it sticks, see that it's for inches up and tangled in the nylon, realize this is the zipper I had made a show ceiling inside, nearly screamed, run to the other side and jump on, have hatchet and knife out of bag and don't sleep, packed out early, I sometimes wonder what and why someone was out there, I also wonder if me staring someone down bare ass scared them, I can only hope. Be camping out near Talladega National Forest. Bump into a few Mexicans lost in the woods. We make jokes about how we all got lost crossing the border and wound up here. Spend a few hours hiking one of the trails before we split up and go our separate ways. Meet up a day later and hike back out together. Black Creek Trail. Hiking out in Mississippi. Bump into some boomers on their way out the trail. Harass me because they think camping with a handgun is unheard of. Tell them politely there are quite a few homeless camps popping up lately, and there have been a few reports of muggings from them. Their attitude changes and we part ways. Few days later hiking out and boomer guy I talked to earlier with a few of his friends walk past me with shotguns and bats. We casually nod at each other and I walk past him without saying anything. Pinhody Trail. Hiking the Pinhody starting in Heflin down. Keep running into people who let their dogs run loose. Almost got attacked by a wandering pit until their artho owner managed to wrangle it away. Had some hippie try to steal my tent with me still in it? Lots of local ordinances won't let you walk, so I had to CC in towns. Bikers try to push you off the trails. Areas to camp littered with garbage and animal sheet. Got harassed in a couple of towns by local cops for being homeless. Did two weeks in and went home? Only fun part of that trip was the only black guy from Idaho I met who liked playing Dixie on the harmonica and handed out in word cards to confused white people. Few days later hiking out and boomer guy I talked to earlier with a few of his friends walked past me with shotguns and bats. We casually nod at each other and I walked past him without saying anything. Only fun part of that trip was the only black guy from Idaho I met who liked playing Dixie on the harmonica and handed out in word cards to confused white people. Keckled. This one isn't exactly scary, just weird. Live in a city with basically no woods, just sugarcane plantations. Me and friends go out in a small natural reserve that follows the creek that flows into the city. We are just walking around a small trail in there. We found some old silos and tanks once used to store ethanol, but are abandoned and decrepit for quite some time. Weird, it was meant to be a protected area, but maybe it was there before. We saw a path off the trail and we follow. A shack that looked like it was made by a homeless. Around it there was lots of banana trees, an old campfire and some pipes that interconnected with each other. Maybe it was a water filter or some crackhead shit. Also a sign with some schizo shit, translating it to English means, banana farm of dad piece of god, I can't remember the exact words. We all leave confused. Fast forward a couple months, we go back to that trail again after wandering around other trails. That shack is completely gone, lots of pallets around a fucking bench. Not some improvised, or shit bench, it was a proper bench made of good wood, with carvings. That and a campfire that had some embers on it. There is no roads, the trail is only big enough for a motorcycle, the woods despite small are dense as fuck. No way a car could go in there. We hear dogs barking coming closer and just move on. Shit story, but I don't know how that shit ended up there. Posted this on X and was directed to post it here too. Be me, 27. Live in decently rural southern Maine, nearest town is 20 minutes away. About 4 months ago, middle of winter. Dad out for the day, brother is working, home alone in my basement playing video because winter break and fuck working have to poo go upstairs to the bathroom i should note that the window in our bathroom is not tinted and opens up to a foyer which itself has a window so i can see clearly out to our backyard anyways sit down to do my business 
scrolling through Facebook and shit. Look up outside just in time to see a snow owl swooping down from the sky and landing on a branch. Think to myself that's pretty cool. Wait a second. Do a double take. The owl is huge. Like fucking huge. Wingspan is easily 10 feet across, thing is probably as tall as a person, maybe taller. Branch it's sitting on is struggling to hold it up. Stare for a few long moments, wondering WTF I'm looking at. Thing is just leisurely preening itself and doing owl things. Start messing with my phone to try and take a picture. Look back up to see it staring right at me. Freeze for a moment. The thing flaps its wings and lifts off of the branch, flying toward the house. Hear a loud thump as it lands on the roof of the house. Shit bricks. Call neighbor. Ask him if he can see the big ass fucking owl on the roof of our house. Says he doesn't see anything. Sit around for a moment, wondering if I should go outside. Decide to nut up and go outside. Sure enough, nothing there. Only evidence that it ever existed is the breaks on the frozen snow where it landed on the roof. Contemplate if I'm going schizo. Still have no clue what that was. Was not a thunderbird, or how people would traditionally describe them. This was 110% a snow owl-like pick related, very white, and was slightly hard to see with the fresh snowfall. Got other stories too, some mine and some of my friends. Be me. Fayetteville, North Carolina. Buds tell me about creepy and abandoned Rockefeller estate. Say they have been several times, each time strange things happen and they leave. Rocks being thrown near slash at them etc. decide to go with them in my truck. Path there is off highway and requires an off-road capable vehicle, Tacoma makes it through with slight difficulty. It's dark as fuck and we begin walking around and exploring the old buildings. Nothing too crazy, just collapsed buildings and asbestos lined basements. The whole compound is a circle, so you can just follow the trail and you will end where you started. With this in mind we parked truck on exit road facing the way back to highway. Fast forward we are ready to leave after being slightly disappointed with the lack of spooky shit. Get in truck and slowly make our way back to highway. We are quick to notice that as we leave the field and get deeper into the woods the trail is different somehow. Decide to keep going until trail takes us to an old bridge over a rapid stream, there was no bridge or stream when we first came down this road. Shitting bricks we check Google Maps, which tells us that we are on the highway. We cross bridge on foot and find a house on the other side. The stream split there and you could only cross by a large fallen tree. We climb across one at a time using our phones to illuminate the log. Once we are all across and standing on the island, we continue to the other side of the house. See that the tree or a tree had fallen and collapsed the roof and some of the walls, exposing the basement which was nothing but a pitch black hole in the middle of the house. No stairs, no ladder. I throw a rock. Wait a minute, no sound. We are all thoroughly spooked by this Blair Witch type shit. Continue down side of house and find a dam that the stream is running through, on other side is a large lake we didn't know was there. Could not find it on Google Maps either. By this time we all felt like there was something near us and watching. On the far end of the dam there was a trail that went deeper into the woods. Something was off about it. Looking down into it even with a flashlight, it was too dark. Darker than the basements we had crawled down into. We say fuck that and get back in truck. Throw that bitch in reverse and get back to the highway. Make it back to clearing in front of compound. We decide to try the trail in front of us again, it's either that or go back into the compound that is fenced in with zero way out. Throw truck in FWD and pray that nothing happens again. This time the trail is like it was when we arrived, and we make it to the highway. Looking back in the rearview mirror I see a light floating in the darkness of the trail, before disappearing. More context. There are rumors of weird occult shit surrounding that property, buds mention child sacrifice and a random obelisk found in the ruins of one of the buildings. 
Weird glyphs painted on a lot of the buildings as well, inside and out. Some buildings had random rooms with no windows and heavy doors with one handle slash lock on the outside. Creepy shit. D me. Camping at Colaton State Park in South Kakalaki, in a basic tent. Left dog at home with roommate because it might be too hot during the day. Buddy is with me and we do basic camping stuff. Fires, food, and alcohol. Not an empty park at all. Plenty of people though none within several hundred yards of our site. Nestled right against an embankment that drops 20 feet or so into swampy land then a river. We call it a night and bed down. Eyes are heavy. It is unnaturally quiet for such a well-used park. Here rustling to my right, which is where the embankment is, fucking jolted awake, as why. Heart racing, adrenaline absolutely maxed, why the fuck didn't I bring the dog? Pay careful attention to the steps and they are clearly bipedal. Rules out all animals in that part of the world, very slow pace steps but very steady. Never felt the need to be so goddamn quiet in my life I am controlling my breath to where I can't even hear it, peeking out the mesh of the tent but it is pitch black. Not a shred of moonlight or artificial light. Steps pause like fucking immediately perpendicular to my spot. Is this how I die? I've completely stopped breathing now for what feels like an eternity. Steps continue onwards with their slow pace. The kicker is my buddy didn't hear shit because he's half deaf and was sleeping in the bed of his truck with all sorts of shit around him. Eventually calm the fuck down and fall asleep. Next morning, we're both awakened to the sound of kids screaming down by the river. Rush down to see what's going on. At least one kid drowned in river. Kid was dragged down below and all of his friends seemed to be trying to find him. Cops show up, find a body downstream, head missing. My friend and I saw a texture fail to render IRL. Walking down trail next to a lake with my friend. The sun is starting to set, it's late evening but not dark yet. Come upon a tree that was half normal and half pitch black, split vertically down the middle, see pick. We both immediately stop, and have a discussion about why it's like that. Take out my phone flashlight, and step closer to inspect the tree. Under the light of the flashlight, there's no seam, the whole tree looks completely normal. Ha, huh, it was just a shadow making it look like that. Turn flashlight off. Tree is now completely normal. There were no street lights or lights around of any kind that could have been casting a shadow on it. The sun was already hidden and casting no shadows. The whole thing happened in like 30 seconds. I still don't know what the fuck happened but I'm so glad there was a second witness. I got a quick one. Be me. Camping with boy scouts in the unitas. Go off into the woods late at night to pee. Obviously just need to jerk off. Go maybe 20 yards into the woods. See a light in the distance. Zip up my fly really quick and get low thinking it's a camp counselor. Light slowly gets higher and higher. Takes off into the sky, dissipates and goes away. I still don't know what to make of it. The light was a really bluish color. Anyone know what it could have been? B 15 year old at BSA summer camp. Sharing platform tent with my buddy for first time. Hear him get up in the middle of the night, get out of his mosquito netting. Hear his footsteps go out of camp, far away, opposite direction of the latrine. WTF. Man up and go check on him. Follow the direction I heard, look up and see his silhouette standing alone in the parade field in moonlight. Walk up behind him. H hey man, where are you going? He quickly looks over at me, goes, oh the bathroom, in a monotone voice. Wrong way man, this way. I walk him back to the latrine. In the morning he told me he sleepwalks. The rest of the week he would talk to me in his sleep. One night he tried to stand up in his cot, and woke up screaming when he lost balance in the dark. Here's just a fun little story. Go camping with some friends at Wilson's Promontory during winter. Nothing too serious, just setting up tents at a campground near a lake. Days aren't too bad but nights get really cold and damp. Last night there is super windy. Can't sleep because it sounds like huge ocean waves are roaring right in my ear. 
Keep trying to sleep but can't, sounds like the tent is going to just fly away. Next minute the tent cover flies off. Me and friends are all now getting rained on in the middle of the night, have to all get out of the tent and quickly put the cover on while it's insanely windy and rainy. Eventually realize that we were missing some pegs for the tent cover. Put missing pegs in. No more problems. A rookie mistake but then again I was a rookie. Me. Be me. 16. Invite girl over for some bang girl action for the first time. Father is not pleased. We argue and I put a hole in the wall like an artist. Grab my shit hit the fin bag and hit the trail behind my house with her. Head toward little tree house some dude built over a creek. Plan to stay a week or so there. My dumb ass forgets to bring any weaponry, so I was in a rush to get the hell out of there. We post up in what was dubbed in my childhood as the bloody anus. Listen to music. Bang. Have a fire. Having the time of my life. Come night time. We hear the usual shit for that area. Coyotes howling and such. Wake up about 7 a.m. to GF borderline in tears, frozen with terror. Ask her what is wrong. Tells me about seeing some sort of figure checking out the area in the moonlight. Shit. Plan on joking with her that night. Leave the treehouse and drag a stump through the woods while shouting etc. That night we finish burning some brush and hit the sack. Get up to leave the treehouse around 2 a.m. As soon as I climb down the ladder of to buy for s nailed to the tree the normal ambience of the forest. Stops, completely silent save for the creek, no frogs, no wind, howling anything, not even the trees settling. I stood there listening. As soon as I head a little bit away from the camp, I begin to hear birds chirping. Strange but okay. Get sorta unsettled and climb back into the treehouse. Wake up to the trees creaking, still no wind or anything. The sound kept getting closer and closer. Apparently GF heard it too and sat up alongside me. We look out of the hole for the sly and see a maybe 8 foot tall black figure with very angular limbs. Sounds weird to write it but you had to have been there. Thing is absolutely still and we both stare at it for what seemed like 20 minutes. Again no ambience, only the sound of trickling water through a creek. GF begins to tremble. I put my hand around her waist as quietly as I can. As soon as I do the figure turns slowly and walks away. We lie back down and try to sleep as quietly as physically possible. No chance. Sun rises. We head back to my dad's place to relax and get something to defend ourselves if something were to happen. Grab my sks and we head back. The rest of the trip goes perfectly fine. Didn't see so much as a deer the rest of the time. About a year later we return with her sister, her friend, and my friend. Have a good time. Drank some beers ate some canned soup. We sleep in the very same treehouse. GF's sister and friend slept in a hammock and my friend slept in a tent. Wake up in the morning to GF's sister's friend completely shaken up. Tells us that she saw a figure looming over her in the night. Anyway. Sort of a boring story, but it is probably the most entertaining one I have of the thing in the woods. Saw it a few more times here and there but never with anything going on. I've since moved across the state and built a house with her. I moved out of that place six or so years ago and haven't had any spooky sightings since. Save for a black bear checking me out laying my foundation. Still get the creeps whenever I drive through the town thinking about what happened those few times. If you guys are interested, I have another story of my buddies and I LARPing in a trying to find and shoot the thing. Hey stalker, hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.